Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about uh, IDDQ testing. I am Sebastian Suresh, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE. IDDQ, IDDQ testing is nothing but a current measurement across transistors that have been faulty. So uh, in CMOS process, it generally it is generally believed that good transistor will not draw current when it is not switching, that is when it is turned off, there, is, there won't be any current across the transistors. So this is believed to be a general theoretical concept. So based on this principle, we are going, the current across the transistor will be measured. So if the transistor is good, there won't be any current across it. And if the transistor is faulty, it tends to draw the current. So what the process involved in IDDQ testing is first the IC under testing will be supplied a set of test vectors that is the input and after the input settles down the eventually the circuit will settle to a final stable state of output condition so the first after reaching the first stable state condition the current drawn by each and every transistor has been measured so as, as we have uh, discussed before, a good transistor will not draw any current from the supply voltage, whereas a faulty transistor will draw. So when you can see the diagram, the transistor, for example, in the first stage, this is the first stage. So if it is given a one value, if it is given a one value, that P mass transistor will be turned off and the N mass transistor will be turned on. And the output of the first stage will be zero. And similarly, this zero will drive the second stage of inverter. So this is nothing but a CMOS inverter. This zero will be given to the second stage where second stage P MOS transistor will be that is P MOS transistor will be turned on and the N MOS transistor will be turned off. So see a configuration like this. This zero will switch on this P MOS transistor. So this P MOS transistor will start what see will will start accumulating the current and it will start to start to leak the current via the first stage NMOS transistor so which is said to be on at the first stage so initially when zero has been given this transistor will be off and since this input is still uh, available at the input of this transistor this transistor is on during this period so the, there will be there will be a notable amount of current flowing from the NMOS transistor from the PMOS transistor towards the NMOS transistor so this causes the defective current so as as per the logics design the current has to fall to zero at a, at after some particular time period but since this pmos transistor is a faulty one so the current st continues to stay in a high value so this is how during iddq testing the faulty devices will be turned off so i will be repeating it once again so the ic under test or the device under test will be given as a series of test vectors and it is allowed to set to a final output value. After that, the current drawn by each and every transistors will be measured and based on the logic, function, logic output or the logic functionality, the faulty transistors will be found out. Some of the advantages are, so it improves the quality in an IC, that is uh, it helps in identifying falls much easier than the other methods comparatively and it also reduces the production cost and failure test analysis can be easily done that is it is used to test uh, exactly all the transistors or all the components in an ic and mainly it is used to identify bridging fault that is when two or more networks are cascaded so that bridging fault can be identified so whenever there is a cascaded function is in place, so this IDDQ testing is of more importance. And finally, some of the faults detected using IDDQ testing are 
transistor stuck open fault that is open circuit fault and stuck closed that is uh, short circuit fault and bridging fault that is oxide short in the sense uh, oxide layer and uh, uh, for example if you view the structure of a normal nmos transistor the substrate and the gate oxide will be separated by a SiO2 layer. So if there is any short between the gate oxide layer and the substrate material, so it also can be detected using IDDQ testing. Then interconnect bridging faults and unpowered interconnect opens. So whenever there is a interconnect is not connected to a particular node, so it can also be detected using IDDQ testing. So this is how IDDQ, IDDQ testing is mostly preferred in testing. Thank you all.